what is up guys so this is cupcake queen raven here if you are new to my channel thank you guys so much for stopping in if you're a returning subscriber i thank you so much but either way i hope both parties are subscribed in today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how i make a Minnie mouse two-tiered cake from start to finish i always get so many questions on how i do my cakes so, you know you guys want me to show more behind the scenes and i definitely agree that it is long overdue and so right now i'm just crumb coating a red velvet cake this cake is eight inches um and then i'm going to do the top tier which is going to be six inches both tiers are going to be three layers and so this cake is going to serve 25 guests and right now i'm just doing what's called the crumb coat so first i'm going to be filling my red velvet cake layers with cream cheese buttercream and i'm going to be smoothing it out and i'm going to add my final layer of cake right now and then that's pretty much it so i'm pretty much just going to take some cream cheese buttercream put it on the sides of the cake because i kind of just want to seal in those crumbs uh, because while it's in the refrigerator it's going to get nice and solid so that i can add the final coat for the decoration process and so i kind of just go around the cake i want to say until i feel like it's solid well not solid enough but until i feel like it's firm enough and it's straight if that makes sense you don't want your cake leaning to the side because you want it to be nice and straight when it comes out the fridge because we have to do our decoration process and so i'm just adding some buttercream on the top tier so that um there's no dryness in the cake and the simple syrup that i added will seal in the moisture if that makes sense so this cake is pretty much ready for the fridge and now we are ready to do our top tier so i'm just sealing at the top of that cake and that's pretty much it for that on to the next one so this is a six inch cake um and i'm just putting that cake board there because that's going to go on top of our bottom tier and i'll show you guys that process as the decoration process goes along and so i'm just i'm leveling out the cake right now with a serrated knife so that it's nice and straight and flat as you can see right there and i'm just adding my cream cheese same process as what i did with the bottom tier and I just want to make sure it's the same amount of buttercream for the most part in each layer so that it's not too high on one layer of cake and too low on the next one, if that makes sense. And so I'm ready for my second layer of cake. And then same process yet again, just putting a good amount of cream cheese buttercream in the middle of the cake. And then I'm going to just smooth it out with my wand because I want to make sure that everything is nice and flat and even. And so that's pretty much it. I'm just taking the wand and going back and forth, smoothing her right on out. And I want to make sure it's nice and flat, as you can see there. Okay, so I'm just taking the excess buttercream out on the bottom tier so that nothing's oozing out on the sides. Remember, we want to make it as straight and neat as possible because I'm going to put it in the fridge. So I need it to be solid. I need her to stand up straight and tall like the Statue of Liberty. If you're from New York or if you've been to New York, you know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? So that's pretty much it for this top tier. She's ready for the fridge. And now we are ready to take our bottom tier out the fridge and see how it's nice and solid. It is leaning a little bit to the side, but I'll fix that process later as this, pro as this video goes along. So this video is 16 minutes. I just want to thank you guys if you're still with me for watching up to this far. But I just wanted to show an in-depth and detailed step-by-step -step process of the cake, of how I do my cakes um, without it being, you know, sped up if that makes sense okay so i'm just taking some pink buttercream and i use this in a pastry bag because i want to make sure it's an even amount of buttercream all around the cake you can use your wand to put the buttercream on the sides of the cake but i just use a pastry bag because i'm able to control and know that there's an even amount of buttercream all around the cake so that when i use my bent scraper which you'll see in a few moments it's it's an even layer when I go around and smooth out the buttercream and not I'm worried about cake missing over here and missing over there you know what I mean so I'm just taking the wand just to smooth out those lines and I'm ready for my bench scraper okay so when I use my bench scraper um, I do put it in hot water uh, because I want to make sure I get those air bubbles out and those lines that was from the wand if that makes sense so I actually did edit this part of the video out a lot because this process can be very tedious can be very long it can be very overwhelming because you're constantly, you want to go back and forth and make sure the cake is as smooth as possible. You want to make sure you're not seeing any cake layers through the buttercream. Um, and so, again, it could be a very long process. And I know, <laughs> you, you know, people want to just get on with the video. So I did, like I said, edit a lot of this part out. And so now I'm just taking the wand and I'm kind of just scraping the top of it. Not scraping, but just kind of cleaning up the top of the cake to seal up the edges, make sure it's as straight and neat as possible because this cake is going to be going back into the fridge so that it's solid and firm for our decoration process which you'll see in a few moments 
And that's pretty much it for this bottom tier in this process of the decoration. And so you just want to make sure it's as smooth as possible. And now she's going right back in the fridge. Now I'm ready for my top tier. Same process, a good amount of pink buttercream. I'm going to go, we're going to move back and forth. And that's pretty much it. You see how the buttercream is going on the sides? It's going down the cake. I want to make sure that that buttercream that just fell on the sides at the top meets this buttercream that I'm doing all around, as you guys can see. So same process, just taking the pink buttercream in the pastry bag to just ensure that there's an even amount of buttercream on all aspects of the cake. When I use my bench scraper, it's easy to smooth out. Sometimes when you use your wand, you know, to use buttercream around the cake, you may have put more buttercream on one side and then more, not enough on the other. And so you might have cake showing, which we don't want to do. Customers are paying good money for these cakes. And we want to make sure that they don't see cake until they cut it themselves. Okay. So same process again with the hot bench scraper just kind of going around the cake and again I did edit this part of the video a lot just for the sake of time and but I just wanted you guys to pretty much get the point on how I smooth the cake and what tools do I use so again just taking the wand scraping the edges of the cake just making sure we're nice and clean because this is going back in the fridge because it needs to get cold and solid okay so that's pretty much that for this part of the decoration process for my top tier. And now we are ready to jump back into the bottom tier. Now this part is a little bit tricky, but please bear with me. So this is a plastic dowel rod, okay? And these are used to support the top tier of the cake, okay? So I pretty much use the clock method, which I'll show you guys in a few moments, but I wanna put one plastic dowel in the center of the cake. I'm gonna be putting one, two, three, four, five, Five, I'm putting, sorry, I had to count real quick. I'm putting five plastic dowel rods in this cake. And you want to cut it a little bit underneath the cake to make sure that it goes down well underneath. You don't want to put it too high because, again, this is going to be supporting that top six-inch cake that we have in the fridge waiting for us, okay? So this is, as you guys can see, this is front, middle, and the back. And then I'm going to be adding two additional plastic dowel rods on the opposite ends of the middle, okay? Because we want to make sure our top tier is as supportive as possible. And so you don't need to add these many plastic dowels, but I'm just overthinking. I just want to make sure, you know, my cakes are well supported. And that's pretty much it for this process. So the plastic dowel rods are in, and now we are ready to add. So front, side, middle, and left. <laughs> so you can just use the clock method with this pattern. So you can just do 12 o'clock. 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock, and one in the middle. So as you can see, I just put a good amount of buttercream just to hide those plastic dowels. But the, the buttercream is going to make sure that this sticks to the top tier cake, if that makes sense, okay? So I just want to put it on top gently. You don't want to make sure it's too hard. And there we go. So this is pretty tricky, but it's easy once you get the hang of it. And you want to, you want to do this process this step very quickly because you see how I just use my hands a little bit? You don't want to make sure you have any finger indentations in the cake. And so what I'm doing is the reverse scallop method on the bottoms here because I just want to kind of seal up the bottom um, of my uh, six inch cake because I want to make sure we don't see any board. And this kind of just gives more decoration and depth to the cake. And so um, once I complete this process, I'm just going to be adding some sprinkles. But again, this is called the reverse scallop method. And I'm just kind of going opposite ends back and forth and back and forth just to kind of give some decoration and we're gonna, we just wanna hide that board up top, okay? So I'm just gonna be using some colorful sprinkles um, that I got from my baking supply store, not too far from my house. And so because Minnie Mouse is a very fun thing, this is just pretty much colorful sprinkles with hearts in it, it's purple, and just kind of fun decoration for the kids. I'm just gonna be adding some more sprinkles on the top tier because I kind of wanna mimic whatever's at the bottom at the top yet again. And so that's pretty much it for that process. Now we're ready to add Minnie Mouse. So this is going to be an edible image. And so with the edible image, I just put Minnie Mouse on some buttercream. And the first thing I'm going to do is take some Dab and Hold, which is an edible glue that I purchased from Michaels. And so what the edible glue does is pretty much what it sounds like. It's just used as an adhesive to glue the um, fondant that has the edible image on it to the cake. So this is, like I said, it's completely edible. I ain't using Elmer's glue. This is not glue that, you know, was back in the day that you used to rub together in your hands and, you know, make all types of decorations and a mess with. This is edible glue strictly for cake decorating. And so pretty much the edible image that I'm using, Minnie Mouse, she's about nine inches in height. 
Um, the two-tier cake is about 12 inches in height, so we will have some extra space there, as you guys can see. And I pretty much just wanted to lay her down in the front. Um, this was pretty tricky to do because I wanted it to kind of stand up on its own. Not on its own, but I kind of wanted it to be straight up from the bottom tier. But it did need to lean on the top tier because I didn't want the image to break, if that makes sense, okay? And so now I'm ready to add little Minnie Mouse little mini mouse i guess you can say decorations throughout the top tier of the cake um you don't need a mini mouse cookie cutter for this process if you have like a bunch of circle cookie cutters you can just pretty much use you know one size circle cookie cutter and then obviously two smaller ones for the ears and so uh i actually learned something during this process too and that is pretty much that you do not want to make sure your fondant is too thick when you roll it out because it will slide down the cake as you guys can see here. So the thinner, the better. I'm not saying you have to see through the cake. It shouldn't be thin like a you know sheet of loose leaf paper. Absolutely not. Um, but I would say to roll out your fondant about a quarter of the inch thick and then you know the cake, the fondant should be able to stick to the cake with no problem. Also, you wanna make sure your house is nice and cool. Just the littlest things can you know affect your cake okay but this cake was done in the winter time so it really shouldn't be too many excuses with that okay and so for the bow i pretty much just had like a silicone um mold wrap mold for the um bow and i pretty much just took some pink fondant put it in there and then put it in between the ears and that's pretty much it obviously if it was a mickey mouse cake we would just leave omit the bow and then go on with howard day if that makes sense okay so I kind of just wanted to do an up-down method with Minnie Mouse on the top tier. So that's why you see one is at the bottom, one is at the top. I'll be putting one again at the bottom again, and so on and so forth. So because it's a six inch, I don't need to add too many of them. Um, it, it does help when you do these things ahead of time. So like I kind of just glued them as you guys are watching in the video. But had I done them the night before, it would have stuck better, I think. So just keep that in mind. And that's also something I'm learning from myself too. So we added three already. We're going to add, I think I add five in this process. So I'm just adding one more up top. And then I'm going to do one more at the bottom. Because when people turn the cake or when there's pictures, you want to make sure all aspects of the cake are covered. You don't want to leave any awkward holes or anything like that. So you just want to make sure there's a good amount of Minnie Mouse cookie cutters, cook cutouts, excuse me, um, kind of spread amongst the tops here. So I hope you guys are still with me because we are pretty much at the majority of the video. Okay. And so now we're ready to decorate our bottom tier. Um, and so I could have used white polka dots, but I just chose to use a bubblegum pink just simply because the pink that I'm using for the buttercream was already light. It's a light pink. So I'm like, I don't want to use a white color. I want it to kind of stand out. So that's why I chose to use the bubblegum pink, which is the color of her dress. So, I mean, Minnie Mouse comes in different shades. Um, I'm very grateful that my custard, the client, let me have creative control over this cake. She just told me it had to be pink. So I was like, okay, that's fine. I can work with that. Um, and so that's pretty much it with that. So I just took, again, my circle cookie cutter, uh, rolled out my fondant, you know, with the bubblegum pink which is the same pink you know with the bow that you see above and I just kind of created a pattern and now I'm going to be putting the second row of dots in between the first ones because I want to create a pattern and some type of structure between the dots I don't want to kind of I don't want to have my dots going all over the place I wanted them to be pretty much uniformed okay so that's pretty much that I'm not going to add a third row of dots because we have our border right there and these um, dots I would say about the size of a quarter so you don't want to make it too low I still want to show the sprinkles and the decorations and the fun colors that are on the border okay so that's pretty much it for that I'm just putting them like I said in between each all of the dots just to kind of create some type of pattern uh in between that so i'm probably gonna add yeah one more would go right there because i don't want to leave it too bare up in the front because you know the front is where people usually take pictures for the most part and so i'm just gonna add my final dot right there for this cake and that's pretty much that for the top and bottom tier now we are ready to add an edible banner so see it says happy birthday kiara so this is just an edible banner on black fondant Looking at it now, I definitely could have added, um, a, I could have made the lettering pink because that's the theme of this cake, but I feel like black would work well too because, you know, her stockings are black, 
her arms are black. Well, I don't know if that's arms or she got stockings. I don't know, child. It's been, it's, Minnie Mouse has been out for years. But you get what I'm saying. Like, there's black in the cake, so that would be fine. But again, I think pink would have been a better color, but we chose, I chose to use black. Um, not sure why, but we're just going to go with it at this point. And so that's pretty much that. Happy birthday, Kiara. That's my customer's daughter's name. And I'm going to use a one-themed Minnie Mouse uh, cake topper. I ordered that from Amazon, um, and that's just going to go on, on the top of the cake. You don't need to add a cake topper for the top of your cake, but I hate bear cakes. So that's that's why I put something there. And so I'm just adding some lollipops that I got from uh, Party City. And this is strawberry flavored lollipops. Um, again, I usually, when I do kids cakes, I do try to add some type of candy just simply because I feel like kids look forward to stuff like that. They like it. It helps with the cake. And that's pretty much it, guys. So this is Minnie Mouse. She's ready to go. She's ready to be eaten. If you guys made it this far in the video, thank you guys so, so much for watching. And please stay tuned for more. Enjoy the rest of your day. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you, guys. Have a good one.